What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about adding and removing parameters from your URLs dynamically. So if you're building something like search where you have the ability to maybe search customers within a date range or add in filters for paid customers within a date range, you end up having to combine all of these hashes um, or these keys into a hash of parameters. And those go in your URL. So we need to be able to create links to add a parameter without modifying or removing the existing stuff or to maybe remove one or override one, um, but include everything else. And so that's what we're gonna talk about in this episode. Um, so link parameters are very important for anything related to search, index pages, um, and filtering. And so what you might have is you might have a link to like all your customers, and then you might have a link to paid customers where it sets paid as true in the URL. But then you might wanna have customers within a date range um, and then paid customers within a date range. And so this date range might be two fields you would fill out and then put dates in the URL. And so you might have uh, start equals 2018 and end equals 2019. And maybe you are just searching by years um, for your date ranges. But when you click on these, you want it to persist that in the URL in your links. And so what we normally do is we use these path helpers um, but it doesn't really work if we have dynamic stuff because then um, we have to put in here start and this would be params start and end would be params end. And that would work, but it's gonna be hard coded so that we have to know these parameters ahead of time and we can't get, um, we have to very, very much pay attention to this stuff. Now, one cool thing is that with Rails, you can actually pass a hash in here and use that as an option instead of a URL path, which is cool. So this is going to use the current URL and add these as parameters or set them as the only parameters on the current URL. So if we refresh this page now, we'll see customers within a date range of end and start. If you look at the bottom left, um, you'll see localhost 5000, end 2019, start 2018. And you'll notice that's actually reversed from the current URL because Rails is rewriting the URL from scratch. Now, we have to explicitly set every one of these options that we want in here, and that's gonna be somewhat problematic. Now, you might think, well, wouldn't it be nice to just say params here? So we could take all of these params out of the URL and just put them right into our link. Well, you would be smart thinking that. However, Rails is no longer going to allow you to do that. And the reason for that is because of strong parameters. And so strong params is going to tell you that you have to permit those parameters explicitly. So it's basically doing the same stuff as we just did here, but you have to use strong params for that. Um, and so that's not super helpful, but Rack actually provides us request.params, which is what we can use for this. So now we can refresh our page and see end and start um, are still in different orders, which is fine um, because Rails is rewriting that URL for us. But now we can add any of these parameters in here um, that we would want, and it will keep those in the URL as we go. And so if we wanted to do something, um, like we want to say accept the paid attribute. So we don't want to have paid in the URL here. If we tried to put paid in the URL, highlighting this one, you will see at the bottom left that it does not include paid. So this way is a great way to say, well, um, we'll take all the parameters in the URL except for paid users. And for paid customers within a date range, we could do the same thing. Um, but we would have merge and paid would be set to true. And so doing that, we can take a look at, let's get rid of paid in the URL. And then we can highlight this one and you will see uh, that we get paid equal to true in the URL on it. Um, and so that way we can click these now and it will continue to persist the start and end, which we've never specified in our code now, it continues to persist those. So we can add new filters in and all of our links will continue to work as we would expect them to, which is really good. 
Um, when you have search, you're going to have lots of different parameters and different types of filters that you're going to be passing in. And so you want to do something like this uh, with request.param so that you can merge and remove items very easily from that when you're clicking on these different types of links. Um, and so that is uh, how you can use request.params to add and remove parameters and persist them dynamically across links in your app, which become very, very useful when you're building search. So that's it for this episode. I just wanted to show you a little uh, use case of request.params in Rails and why you can't do that with the strong params regular uh, thing that you use in the controllers because it wants you to persist or explicitly uh, state which ones are allowed. So that's it for this little pro tip episode of Go Rails. If you wanna see more like these in the future, let me know in the comments below with which methods or pieces of functionality in Ruby or Rails that you would like to see, and we will cover those in the future. Till then, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.